So what is the point of this video? Basically, if you clicked on this video, you're having a debate within yourself internally between the 13 inch and 16 inch. You're looking at the offerings and you're trying to make that decision. Well, hopefully in me pointing out some of the things that I'm pointing out in this video, it's gonna help you make a better decision. What is up YouTube? My name is CJ, this is CJ Knows Tech, where I like to get to know tech, use tech, test tech, and review tech before you have to make a purchase. So hopefully you can make a more informed and confident purchase. Today we're gonna to be talking about how not to buy the wrong MacBook Pro. Apple just refreshed their 13 inch MacBook Pro offering the 10th generation quad core processor chips on the higher end version of the 13 inch, as well as giving us the physical improved keyboard across the lineup, which is a huge improvement and a must for longevity. Although some people, report that their butterfly keyboards are fine and they like them better. Shocking. The number one thing I wanna bring to you in this decision is looking at the price point, especially if you're looking for the 10th generation quad core, which is on the higher end, four Thunderbolt port, 13 inch MacBook Pro, which has a higher price tag, you're starting to inch into that territory of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, here's one truth in reality we all can agree on. MacBook to MacBook Pro lineup is absolutely confusing and it overlaps. There's a lot of overlap as soon as you start to upgrade one tier where it starts to cross into the second tier price-wise where the second tier actually gives you more. For over these long years, I've used so many MacBooks. The Unibody white MacBook, the MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina, the Core i9 first iteration, which went up in smoke and overheating and thermal throttling. I've used three 13 inch MacBook Pros, all with the later generation over the years, but I just couldn't find myself committing to it. Then I grabbed the 15 inch with the butterfly keyboard, Vega 20, spec'd out, and instantly right after that, the 16 inch MacBook Pro dropped, which I returned that Vega 15 inch after doing a comparison to the base model 16 inch and seeing the huge leap in improvement with the update of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I took a hit on that Vega 20. It hurts thinking about it now. But I landed on this MacBook Pro 16 inch i7 with the highest graphics card, the 5500M, I think it's eight gigabytes of uh, DD, you know all that. And we'll get into all of the physical specifications in detail when we get into the apple.com website and I do a comparison, in-depth comparison for you guys. My main thing here is to challenge your decision to make sure that you have an adequate thought and you're thinking about the longevity because when you commit to a MacBook Pro, this is a silk chassis. The only person Apple wants inside of their chassis of their MacBook Pros and Macs and Apple computers, period, is Apple, seriously. There's no upgrades. I want you to think about how long you're gonna be using this machine, what are your needs, if there's any room for growth in your build because once you build, that's it. So let's take a look at apple.com. We're gonna pull its specifications and we're gonna do an in-depth analysis of this 13 inch versus the 16 inch. Both 13 inches versus the MacBook Pro 16 inch. We'll see who wins. All right, guys, so I've pulled up Apple's website and I'm gonna do this so that you can do it yourself. So I'm gonna show you from the beginning. So we're gonna click on Mac and then you have the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro right here. Now there's an option where you can compare it you can scroll down, you can see all of this stuff, but right here, compare all Mac models. This is where you wanna click. So obviously, when you're picking between the 16 inch and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, there's a deciding factor in physicality as far as weight and size. The 16 inch is a bigger device. It's a bigger laptop and it has a higher weight. Now see, you gotta remember, when they show you this up to, they're always gonna show you the highest configuration, like up to for quad core, like come on. Same thing with the two, it's up to, but it's not necessarily what you're gonna get. You're not getting that latest quad core on the lower end two Thunderbolt. You'll have to upgrade to that. Same thing with this eight core i9. No, you can get the six core i7, which is what I have on my MacBook Pro 16 inch, and it's extremely capable. Then you get up to 64 gigabytes of memory on the 16 inch. I have 32. Same thing with the uh, 13 inch. You can go up to 32 gigabytes, but remember memory is expensive with Apple. RAM is one of the places you definitely wanna invest in depending on how labor intensive you're gonna be on your device. So if you're doing a lot of video editing of high-end video with you know high-end processing, then I'm gonna urge you to consider getting more RAM. You know, the entry level of the MacBook Pro 16 inch Round wise is actually pretty solid. Actually, you know what? Let me pull up. All right, 16 inch base model. That's the one I'm gonna select 
for us to configure. And then we're gonna go to the 13 inch. And it's only right if we go with the latest quad core build. Cause that's the one that's getting everybody excited. They didn't do anything really on the base model one. Okay, so you got these i5 10th generation quad cores with up to 3.8 gigahertz, super nice. You're starting off at 16 gigabytes of memory, which is actually more than capable for most of you. Now, when you start getting more labor intensive, then you can spend an extra $400, which is gonna take this thing up from 1800 to 2200. The MacBook Pro 16 inch starts off at 2400, talking about $200 more. You're starting off with the 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you're getting that six core ninth generation i7, which is far more capable. And then here's the biggest kicker between the two, dedicated graphics card. Now this 5300M four gigabyte DDR6 memory, this is a very good graphics processor. Like I did a video comparing that base model 16 inch with that base model graphics card against a specced out 15 inch of the previous year with the Vega twin. I'm talking about like top of the line spec 15 inch and that 5300M actually beat and sometimes neck and neck with the Vega. This is why I'm very hesitant in saying, oh, get this lower end model, lower end offering 13 inch when you can just shimmy your way up to the 16 inch MacBook Pro if it's warranted on board memory. This is another place where it's going to get expensive to upgrade, but you got to think about this. This thing is a sealed chassis. And yes, you could go in there and do a little thing, but it's not recommended. A lot of this stuff is getting soldered on. Apple does not want you opening up their computers. You should never get anything less than one terabyte. I'm highly against one terabyte now. I got one terabyte on here and it's probably the worst decision I could have made as far as onboard storage. But for most of you, if you can offload a lot, which gets tiring, and if you can manage your disk space, one terabyte is fine. So if we go in 13 inch quad core and then we add the one terabyte, right? Now we're at $2,000. One terabyte on a 16 inch does bring you up to 2,600. So it's a $600 difference, but I'm getting a dedicated graphics card and a more powerful processor with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, ideally me, I think on my next high-end MacBook Pro I get, I'm going with four terabytes. Now for you, it's probably overkill, but for me it means a lot because I like to keep a lot of my footage. I don't like to always have to dump. I'm, I'm constantly doing projects like this that I need to offload and record and, you know, get them in, get them out type of thing. If we get on the 13 inch, the higher end with the quad core, we put one terabyte on there with the 16 gigabyte memory, which let's just say, okay, you're doing labor intensive. Let's get the 32 gigs there, 32 gigs on the 16 inch. Now we have $3,000 versus $2,400. And a lot of people is going to be like, whoa, Duh, CJ, the easy go-to is saving $600 and getting a 13-inch MacBook Pro. For some people, that might be true, but that dedicated graphics card is everything in the decision between these two, personally for me, especially as someone who's a creator. Now, if you're somebody who don't or won't rely on the graphics cards, you'll get by just fine with the you know integrated graphics that Apple provides, and maybe you're using Final Cut Pro, you're doing low-end HD, and maybe some lower-end 4K, recording and editing, you can get by just fine, but I'm, you gotta think about the long haul. How long are you gonna keep this MacBook Pro for? Most people keep a laptop of this magnitude well beyond four to five years, I would say, unless you're like me, who's a tech heavy head who might upgrade over the next couple of years, you know? But let me just add in these notes. I used to use Premiere Pro, which is not the most ideal uh, use case on Apple computers. I've heard it's gotten better. I ended up chasing a high-end expensive Apple computer just to maintain Premiere Pro when I could have just used Final Cut Pro and may have gotten by a little better. I've now switched to Final Cut Pro, which I highly recommend any video creators to go to Final Cut Pro way because it's far more optimized and you get a lot more out of your MacBook Pro, whether you choose the 13 inch or the 16 inch. I have an iMac Pro over here. It's not my main computer anymore. The MacBook Pro 16 inch with the i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the highest uh, graphics card available on the 16 inch, which is the 5500 8 gigabyte DDR6. This is my main station. I'm editing 4K 10-bit 422 footage on it. I'm able to handle some high-end 
video editing footage all in my MacBook Pro 16 inch. And the reason why the MacBook Pro 16 inch is my choice is because it's portable. You can start shopping iMacs if you don't want the portability, but let's be real. You clicked on this video because you're thinking about a MacBook Pro and you're trying to make the best decision for you. MacBook Pro 13 inch, very capable. I've owned three MacBook Pro 13 inches. Uh, I bought them over time when they updated the processors in the, in the past couple years. When I was traveling because I didn't have a dedicated MacBook Pro system for when I travel and needs to edit on the road while creating videos. So I was iMac Pro main station, no laptops. So I was grabbing the 13 inches, using them, but I couldn't commit to the 13 inch fully. So I would return it after I, the trip was over and using it for a while, but it was very capable. I was doing um, internal recording in 4K, probably like eight bit, and I was able to edit it Final Cut Pro, emphasize that on Final Cut Pro, and I was able to get projects done, edit them and get them out. But, you know, I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't the full luster of what I would want to keep for a long-term uh, travel machine. So I was just waiting. I knew the 15 inch at that time wasn't right. It had the butterfly keys, and that's another big thing. The biggest improvement physically is the butterfly, uh, the lack of butterfly keys, shall I say, on the 13 inch. Now there's two other things I wanted to talk about. I mentioned this in my last video and people challenged me. Oh, it does have the same audio. Well, when you get into the comparison, the 13 inch MacBook Pro has stereo speakers with high dynamic range. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has a high fidelity six speaker system with force canceling woofers wide stereos sound. The 13 inch that we just got in this refresh does not have the same audio improvement as the 16 inch MacBook Pro physically and that is a bummer. This new speaker system that Mac and Apple has enforced on this MacBook Pro 16 inch are absolutely amazing. Now the 13 inch speakers that they're continuing to use are good, but they're not as good as the 16 inch. So keep that in mind if that matters to you. Another thing I spoke about was the microphone, not having the updated microphone that they've given us because the microphone improvements on the MacBook Pro 16 inch as well as the iPad Pro have been stellar and amazing and we're not getting that on the 13 inch. The 13 inch still has the three mic array with directional beam forming, which is the same from the base model. This is the same microphone from the previous 13 inches because when you look at the 16 inch, it says studio quality three mic array with high signal to noise ratio and directional beam forming. I told the people in the last video, they challenged me, they said it does. Other creators were uh, misinforming you by telling you that it was when on Apple's website, it's not described the same. Those are two factors that you might want to consider. They might weigh in on your decision or they may not matter. To get back to my story, I was just basically coming to the conclusion that the 13 inch couldn't pull it for me in the long run especially when I knew in the future I wanted to move to higher end 4K recording, 10-bit 4K, 422, which I am at now, and I'm able to run that smoothly and efficiently on this MacBook Pro 16 inch. Now, yes, the fans are kicking up right now while I'm doing my thing, and they're loud. The fans are always gonna be loud, especially when you use an external monitor on a MacBook Pro 16 inch. When you're not using an external monitor, it's not as apparent, but all MacBook Pros, the fans are loud because uh, airflow and this design is not the best design for airflow. It's just, hey, Apple chose aesthetics over functionality and it is what it is. Yes, I'm kinda encouraging if the necessity and the longevity and just that safekeeping of a 16 inch MacBook Pro it's gonna stretch the wallet a little bit more, maybe waiting and saving and building up to get that. Or if you do have the money, but you kind of hesitant, taking the leap of faith of spending a little bit more for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is gonna give you more longevity, more performance, and I think an overall better MacBook Pro experience personally. But if you don't need all of that and you can get along just fine with the MacBook Pro 13 inch, that's totally fine. Give or take, no matter how you spec these things up, we're looking at a difference of about five to six hundred dollars and i think that five to six hundred dollar investment if you can deal with the increase in size and weight for the 16 inches more worth it in my opinion okay so as you guys see when you start to really dig deep and compare your upgrades and think about all of the uses and the possibility for growth in the future you start to see that it's a tough decision and I understand that. Now, as a longtime Apple user, I know what it is to use an Apple machine, and I know what it is to need that room to grow. I have an iMac Pro 
that was my main station. But guess what? As of lately, the 16 inch MacBook Pro has served as my main editing and workstation right now. And I'm not even maxing it out. This thing is highly capable, but that served my needs. Got 32 gigabytes of RAM, video editing. I'm a high end user. Now, some of you may be just starting off and your needs aren't so much. Well, then the 13 inch can serve, but I just want you to think in reality. Now, if you're just doing 1080 video editing or lower end audio and just all around, just typical laptop use at a higher end use case that will warrant the MacBook Pro 13 inch, then maybe the 13 inch is for you. Honestly, I just wish that Apple would have given us the 14 inch MacBook Pro that we all want with a little bit more space, hopefully for them to add a dedicated graphics card so we can have the all-in-one small form factor yet powerhouse we all want and deserve. Now, that would probably rule out the 16 inch for most, but not everyone. So it's up to Apple to make the decision on that, you know, going forward, we'll see. Tim Apple, what you doing, player? <laughs> so it all comes down to you really thinking about how long are you gonna own this machine, where you fall on the user spectrum, you know, a light to moderate typical laptop user, a mid-tier 1080p, maybe some 4K video editor, audio editing, or are you going mid-tier and evolving into the higher tier over the next four to five years, however long you choose to own this device, and do you need to give yourself room to grow? That's the main thing I want you to think about deeply so you can make a more calculated, informative decision as opposed to just going with the 13 inch because they added the quad core and then you specking that thing out, but you're still handicapping yourself on growth with the lack of a dedicated graphics card. If you don't have a necessity for that, and you're just doing typical hardcore, you know, user laptop stuff, you know what I mean? When I say hardcore, I just mean you use your laptop more than what's necessary of a MacBook Air. You're gonna push it to where the MacBook Air will fall short, so you get the MacBook Pro, so that you can do all those things and maybe have a little room, do a little extra, you know, photo editing, lightweight video editing and so forth. So what is the point of this video? Basically, if you clicked on this video, you're having a debate within yourself internally between the 13 inch and 16 inch. You're looking at the offerings and you're trying to make that decision. Well, hopefully in me pointing out some of the things that I'm pointing out in this video, it's gonna help you make a better decision. Realistically on the 13 inch, this refresh, the only new things we got were the new keyboard, which is more reliable, and the option of quad core 10th generation chips. That's it. There's no new microphone system. There's no new speaker system. At least according to Apple's website, as I showed you, the difference is there. The 16 inch, we are guaranteed the new studio quality microphone and the six speaker, you know, subwoofer canceling system as described per Apple's website in the 16 inch. If those things matter to you, then they may weigh in on your decision, as well as the super powerful dedicated graphics card, which can pull weight like nobody's business, even the base model of the graphics card. So you can get a base model, 16 inch MacBook Pro, have room to grow, and I think have a better value personally. That's just me. Always remember, if you need RAM, get the RAM now. If 16 gigabytes is just enough now, but you might need 32 in the future, get the 32 gigabyte RAM. If a uh, one terabyte hard drive isn't enough now, you might need more in the future, get at least two if you can afford it. But that's an expensive choice. You can go one terabyte, get great uh, external SSDs at a good price and offload footage. You just have to be diligent in doing that, <laughs> which uh, I'm not so good at sometimes. All in all, I hope this made your decision easier. My name is CJ, this is CJ Knows Tech, where I like to get to know tech, use tech, test tech, review tech, so that you can make a better decision on the tech you choose to purchase and live with. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hang around for more videos. I got more coming, and I got a real exciting announcement coming soon, but you're not gonna get in this video. All right, y'all, love, peace. Demons, you like bands?